The U.S. and several European nations have condemned Belarus over its handling of migrants and refugees after a meeting of the U.N. Security Council. Thousands of people are stranded in freezing conditions between Belarus and Poland. Poland has set up an exclusion zone along the border and deployed thousands of troops to stop them crossing into its territory. The U.S. and European countries are calling on Belarus to end its, quote, inhumane actions. They accuse authoritarian leader Alexander Lukashenko of intentionally creating a crisis by sending migrants to the border. Here on the Belarusian-Polish border, men, women and children are hemmed in by security forces on both sides. Belarus says around 2,000 people have been camping out here for days, surviving on dwindling supplies. The UN's High Commissioner for Refugees told DW that some aid reached the camp on Thursday. We were able to give them first aid assistance, literally, and what needs to be done now is to move them to a safer place where we can have access more easily and also explore what the solutions are. Can they seek asylum in Belarus, for example. Uh, for many, there may not be a, an asylum solution, so what's the solution? Go back to their countries. Others may have family reunification needs. On the Polish side of the border, patience is wearing thin. EU foreign ministers have been discussing further sanctions on Belarus. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a situation in which it may feel appropriate to curse Mr. Lukashenko, but that is no longer sufficient. We are in a situation where it is overdue to impose the right consequences. The UN Security Council has also held an emergency meeting on the situation. Russia is one of the biggest supporters of the regime in Belarus. It hit back at accusations that it's colluding with Minsk to manufacture the border crisis. Of course, uh, there is a game of uh, shifting blame now by European Union. They want to picture Belarus and sometimes even Russia as uh, perpetrators of this crisis. Well, we've got used that uh, the main slogan of uh, European and uh, Western politics right now is uh, keep calm and blame Russia, so it's no surprise for us. Despite the hostile reception, the migrants are desperate to make it into the European Union. But the EU seems determined to keep them out. For more, I am joined by Marina Strauss in Hainówka, close to the Polish-Belarusian border on the Polish side. Marina, what's the situation at the border this morning? We saw on the report that the UN Refugee Agency has been granted access to the refugees and migrants at the Belarusian side. So there is some relief for the people on this side. But I still can't, can't exactly tell you what's going on at the Polish side because journalists and also humanitarian aid workers are still not allowed to go into the exclusion zone here. So we have to rely on what the Polish government or the Polish border guards are telling us, what they're sharing on social media. And uh, they, of course, say we have to protect the border. It's the Belarusian side that is threatening us and the people who are illegally crossing the border they are not allowed to do so and they have to go back. Mm. You spoke to migrants. What are they telling you? We are in touch with local NGOs and they um, just told us this night that they found a group of migrants or refugees in the woods here, in these exclusion zones. Because some people who live in the exclusion zone, they can go in there and help the people. And it was an Iraqi couple and a Syrian man and apparently they were robbed, they were beaten with a, with a bar, um, not exactly sure who beat them they say it was um, maybe a local person but that's not that's not confirmed and i also talked to um to two syrian men the other day and they both told me they have been pushed back by um, polish border guards and uh, hit by belarusian border guards 
Um, one of them had a broken rib. They are both now here in a refugee shelter in, uh, in Poland uh, near the border and want to apply for asylum here. So the migrants clearly having all kinds of issues there. I'm curious about something. How are the Poles living next to the border reacting? They're split, I think. That's, that's fair to say. I mean, some people think, yes, we have to protect our border, which is also the EU's external border. And it's uh, also like the ways the way how the Polish border guards are doing it is, is the right way. But there's also a lot of help here in this region. Some We talked to activists yesterday and some people came here from Warsaw or from other Polish cities uh, just, just to just, just see what they can do, help people gather stuff, um, bring blankets to the volunteers who can go into the forest. And of course, there are also local people here in this area. And for them, this is this is a really difficult situa this is a really difficult situation because they cannot just go back to Germany or to Warsaw they are, ha see this right in front of their door and they many of them go into the woods try to help the people bring them blankets bring them food but it's it's a huge burden for them because they have been doing this for months that's uh, Marina Strauss in Hanufka many thanks in an interview with DW, Belarus's exiled opposition leader, Svetlana Tikhonovskaya, has asked the German government to exert more political and economic pressure on the authorities in Minsk. DW's political correspondent, Thomas Sparrow, asked Tikhonovskaya what concrete actions she expects the German government to take. The decisions are made rather slow because of bureaucracy, uh, because maybe uncertainty. Uh, we are asking for more economic and political pressure on the regime. And, you know, the first uh, serious, uh, rather serious sanctions were imposed only in 10 months after uh, fraudulent elections in the country. And a migration crisis, for example, it uh, didn't start yesterday. It started five months ago, four months ago, but new new round of sanctions is being discussed uh, only now. So rather slow decisions. But uh, we are sure that um, behavior of the regime can be changed uh, only with uh, imposing uh, pressure. And uh, you know, on, on the uh, state organizations that are monopolized by the regime, state banks and uh, uh, Kronos businesses of the regime, not uh, to leave loopholes in the sanctions, uh, working together with the uh, USA, U UK, uh, and new Ukraine. Uh, so keep this consistency. Angela Merkel spoke to Russian President Vladimir Putin on the phone and asked him for his intervention to try and stop the situation at the border. How confident are you that Vladimir Putin will actually do that, that he will actually intervene in one way or another to try and solve the situation now? I think that uh, Kremlin can play a constructive role in this crisis. Uh, first of all, by, by uh, not supporting the regime of Lukashenko. Uh, you know, we don't know how uh, how Kremlin can intervene into this situation. You know, as as mediator only, just making a regime start communicating with civil society. But as far as I heard, like uh, the answer was like you have to communicate with the uh, Minsk, with the so-called government. But uh, the position of uh, European Union um, to this issue is uh, principled and and uh, evident. We are not going to communicate with the. Uh, criminal who take uh, millions of people as hostage in their own country and who is, um, uh, you know, organized this migration crisis to, to blackmail us. It's impossible. We'll find other way out of the situation.